I am thrilled to welcome back on the podcast, Amar Kumar, founder of KaiPod Learning, and Ben Ashfield, founder of The Village Electric, a micro school and micro school incubator in New Jersey. What's particularly special about today's episode is that Ben and Amar actually met through this podcast. Ben heard Amar on the podcast and reached out, and now the two of them are collaborating on some exciting projects that we'll hear more about today. It's just great to hear that the podcast is becoming a connector for all kinds of people. So Amar joined me on the podcast back in May to talk about his pathway to launching KaiPod Learning in 2021. After working for years in education, including most recently as Chief Product Officer for Pearson Online's K-12 division. KaiPod is one of my favorite education startups in that it allows parents maximum autonomy to choose whatever curriculum they want for their child, from unschooling and unstructured approaches to more conventional curriculum frameworks, and incorporating any manner of secular or faith-based curriculum options. Students then gather in small mixed-age learning pods, typically in local commercial spaces, and led by experienced educators who are available to help with any curricular questions or issues and who facilitate social and enrichment activities for the learners. KaiPod really blends the best of both personalized online curriculum tied to a family's preferences with in-person, educator-facilitated social learning communities. Amar recently introduced a new program through KaiPod called Catalyst, which helps entrepreneurial parents and educators to launch a microschool in their own local community. One of the entrepreneurial parents who has teamed up with KaiPod is Ben Ashfield. Ben and his wife, Tammy, were on the podcast in September talking about how they created the Village Electric to provide a microschool environment for their children and others while also enabling more education entrepreneurs the opportunity to incubate their microschool idea at the Village Electric space. So in this episode, Ben will update us on the Village Electric, talk to us about his collaboration with Amar and, and what uh, came from that initial conversation from this podcast. And then uh, Amar will update us on KaiPod Catalyst and the vision for that exciting new program. So Ben Ashfield and Amar Kumar, welcome again to the Liberated Podcast. Thank you very much. For so Thank excited. you, Carrie. It's great to have you both back. Uh, I think you're my first repeat uh, guest <laughs> on this podcast, which is quite special, kind of about to head into our second year in production. So I'm thrilled to have the two of you here. And Ben, maybe we could start with you. You know, you listened to the podcast. Thank you very much for doing that. And you uh, heard the episode in May with Amar. And then you reached out to him. I'd love to hear a little bit more about what prompted you to do that. And then how that conversation evolved over time uh, to ultimately have you become a collaborator with Amar and KaiPod on this new Catalyst program. Yeah, so we started our micro school a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, I think, Carrie, you were my first mentor because we we listened to your podcast uh, religiously, um, you know, just to connect with others who were doing similar things, even just, you know, connecting with ideas and people that were talking about things that we were thinking about. Um, and that's when I heard the episode about KaiPod. And it sounded like um, exactly the same things that we were thinking about, you know, flexible learning, in-person learning, how Amar really valued that, um, you, you know, like, like we did when we were starting our micro school. And so I reached out just to start a conversation with someone who was doing something similar to what I was doing. And actually I was very impressed to see the KaiPod website and the extent of what they had created. Um, because I think some of, you know, um, trying to start a micro school is, is feeling kind of alone in doing this and not really knowing where to start um, and who can help you. So um, each time you find somebody uh, or, or you find another organization that's doing something similar, it's, it's so thrilling and it's like a light bulb goes off. So I reached out right away, not knowing what to expect, but really just wanting to connect. 
That's great. And I think it speaks to the power of connection and, and building relationships, especially with people who have a shared vision in this case of education and what education could be. And then, and then seeing where that connection ultimately leads, which was to uh, ultimately become a cattle, a collaborator with Amar on Kaipod Catalyst. So Amar, maybe you could talk a little bit about Kaipod Catalyst, where that idea came from, uh, and then how you're working with Ben and the Village Electric. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so, you know, we look at the, the the vision of education being much more personal, much more flexible, uh, and individualized for every family and every parent. Um, we know that one size fits all just doesn't work for most people. So, our vision is to bring education down into smaller and smaller communities. And often, when you're thinking about a vision like that, you have to think about it as a market. There's a supply and there's a demand. And when those two meet, you get the market. If we think about the demand first, that's demand from parents. And we know that it's not just the listeners of your podcast, but there are millions of parents who are craving more flexible, smaller learning environments for their children. So the demand is there. More states are now allowing funding to follow the students so the demand can now be fulfilled with funding, but the supply is still a challenge. There just aren't enough high quality, small learning spaces in this country. And so there are networks like HiPod who open our own company pods. There's Prenda, there's Acton. There's a lot of companies who are opening these really high quality spaces, but again, there aren't enough. Then there is a segment of independent micro schools like Ben's who are opening their own, they, they take their vision and bring it to life. And we wanna find a way to support them. And then the third, which I find is the biggest untapped potential in this country is all of these educators who have a lot of entrepreneurial energy and they want to serve their community and the community's learners in a new way. And so our strategy is really about these three things, growing our company pods or network, um, supporting independent micro schools like Ben's through our partnership. And then third, the Catalyst program, which is to reach as many educators as we can in as many communities as we can to say, if you want to start a micro school, but you're sort of worried or anxious about what that might mean, let us go on that journey with you. So the Catalyst program is an 18-week part-time cohort. It is completely free of cost, where we bring together folks who are educators or, or passionate parents who know that they want to start a micro school. And just like any accelerator, we want to take something that could take years and do it in months. So our vision is you'll start in February and you'll have a school live by this fall. And through the program, you're gonna get a lot of coaching from our team, a lot of expert uh, interviews and time with industry experts. You'll get templates, you'll get processes, you'll get connections to funders. Um, and really the idea is that all of the things that you probably would take years to figure out, we can compress that so that you have the highest likelihood of success of launching a school this fall. Oh, I just love it because, you know, I hear all the time from people who say, I want to start a micro school. I don't know how to begin. And there's you know, certainly all kinds of strategies. You can go it alone. You can team up with these other networks that you mentioned, such as Acton Academy or Prenda or Liberated Learners. And that would, those would also be great options. But here's another option. And that is that you can collaborate with KaiPod to get uh, this boot camp to get going and then be supported all along the way uh, through KaiPod in, in the back end too. And so Ben, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that, about how you're using KaiPod as an existing micro school founder. Uh, and then maybe what you think about this vision of KaiPod Catalyst for new founders, including perhaps some of the ones who you are helping to incubate uh, programs at the Village Electric. Uh, so, you know, I think when we started our first year, it kind of felt a little bit more like a whirlwind, you know, trial and error was, was okay. Um, and we were just trying to kind of keep the wheels from falling off the bus. But as we went into our second year, um, you know, Tammy and I really had more aspirations and, and higher expectations for what we wanted to do. Um, but, you know, that didn't mean we were necessarily, we necessarily had the time or were so equipped to be able to do that. And I think that's where Kai Pods like really came in and helped us. Like they helped us um, 
uh, with marketing, with enrollment and operations, with you know improving our academic programs, and just lending us a lot of expertise, uh, so that we felt like the, the micro school, uh, you, you know, could could continue, could develop, could kind of like grow and expand. But Tammy and I, as the founders, could focus on what is important to us, which is really you know being there for the students and you know forming relationships with the families um you know and being there for the parents mm. so tell me a little bit more about that ben because i can understand you know obviously the need for more administrative support more marketing support that kind of thing but you also mentioned that you that this was helpful in terms of elevating your academic content how does that work uh, well, we work with um, a curriculum advisor at Chi Pods. Uh, his name's Ryan, and you know, I think it was it was really great to have sort of an objective observation of what was happening, like in our classrooms. So, someone to come in and you know, sort of give us the uh, uh, appraisal of what's going on in the classroom, where we can improve, um, and and also, you know, Ryan was very knowledgeable about all the different um, types of curriculums and the things that we might be able to bring in the classroom to just sort of improve what we're doing um, on an, you know, from an academic perspective. So um, I think just having someone to talk to, you know, knowing um, that someone is there that wants you to succeed, uh, that that's kind of behind you. I think when you're starting a micro school, just that like, emotional benefit is like huge. It's a game changer. Um, but also being able to talk to knowledgeable people that understand where you are and what you're going through and, and can help you, uh, you know, from where you are right at that moment. Yeah. That, it's so valuable to have that other set of eyes, that, uh, sounding board, someone to, um, share ideas with and also to get feedback on what you're doing and maybe some tips for doing it differently or better. So great to hear that kaipod has been helpful for you uh, as you really now become more of an established micro school uh, in, in your second year. So That's right. Amar, if, if I am listening, if I'm someone listening to this podcast and I'm thinking, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I know I want to start a micro school in September this is perfect timing. I'm going to sign up for Catalyst. What happens then? Sure. So we have a four-step process. The first is you obviously apply where there's an online application where we ask you some questions about yourself, your background, your motivations, and then the vision for your program. And we, we, you'll be uh, asked for an interview with a member of our team. Then the second part of the process is you're accepted into the Catalyst cohort is it's an 18-week accelerator which means for the next 18 weeks, we'll have weekly sessions, which are combinations of coaching calls, expert uh, presentations, uh, homework that you're doing in between the sessions, uh, you're building your community with your cohort. It's 18 weeks, it's part-time, and it's designed for someone who may still be teaching, right? They're finishing out a school year, or it's designed for someone who may have another job but wants to move into starting a micro school. So it's an 18 week program that has the modules effectively that you will need to understand to launch your own micro school. That's phase two. Phase three is then in the summer after the Catalyst program ends is you are very busy preparing for launch. And to be clear, these are independent micro schools. These are not gonna be Chi Pods. You don't even have to follow the Chi Pod model. We're truly here to enable a lot of bottoms up innovation. So we have just seen some incredible ideas including a micro school founder who wants to have a micro school on a traveling school bus, including some who want to do forest based micro schools or very traditional um, uh, secular micro schools. So there's a huge variety of ideas that we're supporting as part of Catalyst. And so phase three is launch preparation. And so our entire team is going to be swarming to help you find families, find a location, get licensure if you need it. Um, figure out your business model, build your business plan, um, get your academics in order, get your software ready to go. So all of the things that you need, the nitty gritty, that's phase three. And then finally, phase four is what we call our affiliation period, which is for the next three years, we're there with you every step of the way. So we're not just going to say, all right, good luck, you know, go fly a little bird. We know that the first two to three years of starting a micro school are some of the hardest 
and most challenging and where unfortunately most micro schools fail. So we wanna be there for every step of the way, again, supporting you with marketing, uh, getting leads in the door. Uh, we have lots of email campaigns that help you convert interested parents. Again, providing all the software that we operate uh, to, to help you run your own centers, academic coaching and professional development, like Ben was saying, to help you ensure you're improving learning outcomes for your kids. So if you're interested and you're a little bit scared to start, just do the first step today, which is just fill out the application. That's all you have to do today. Um, and then the next step will be tomorrow. That's such great advice. And so for the initial training period, this initial, I think you said 18 weeks, um, you said that that is no cost mm -hmm. to the entrepreneur in, uh, in training. Yeah. Um, so what is the financial model then of Catalyst? Yeah, the financial model is the 18 weeks is free of cost and we're investing our resources into running that entire program. And then after that period, if you choose to launch your own micro school and you say, yes, I wanna do this, then we wanna enter into a revenue share agreement with you. So as you grow, we benefit. And so we are there to help you grow, help you sustain and help you retain your families because they're doing so well. That's great. Well, hopefully people will be so satisfied with the initial training that they would want to sign up, but they could also just part ways at that point exactly. and do their own thing. If you um, choose not to launch one, then yeah, you can part ways. Perfect. Um, and so what do you see, Amar, as some of the, the challenges for these entrepreneurs who are looking to create a micro school? What are some of the major roadblocks that you've found? Yeah, the, the biggest one is... Um, how do I get enough interest to sustain my micro school? Um, often I'll meet entrepreneurs who say, I absolutely want to build something that's accessible to my community. It's completely affordable. So I'm not going to charge any money. Like, okay, well, but you do need to be able to pay for rent. You need to be able to pay staff or pay yourself. So then they start thinking about charging uh, some sort of a membership fee or a tuition and then all of a sudden it gets really hard to convert parents because now there's a cost associated with it. And so the hardest thing that we see is entrepreneurs will say, I got five or six families, but I can't run a micro school with only five or six families. I need more in order to at least break even. And so the thing that we focus a lot of our efforts on is helping you market your micro school, helping you build the awareness in your community so people know there is now a high quality learning option, a new high quality learning option in their community. So that's the biggest place where we can help entrepreneurs immediately. And then the second place is operations, which is a general term, but it's, you know, the best picture in your mind is the founder running around with their hair on fire. There are a million things to do. There are a million problems to solve. Um, software that doesn't talk to other software or expenses that you don't really want to be spending, we can streamline a lot of that. And I'd love Ben to talk about how we've tried to help them doing that at the Village Electric, but really we are hoping that the processes that we built running our own learning pods can now be applied to help others so that you as a founder, you focus on what you really want to do, which is being with families, being with students. Yeah, and Ben, you said that earlier that that this partnership with KaiPod has really enabled you and Tammy to do what it is you love to do, which is working with the students in your program. But one of the other um, motivators for you in creating the Village Electric was also helping other aspiring micro school founders and education entrepreneurs to incubate their programs. And I, I recall you saying in our conversation in September that uh, space is an issue for people who want to create one of these programs. And that's where you felt like having this established space with the Village Electric could be uh, one way to remove that hurdle. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about some of the challenges that you find aspiring education entrepreneurs encounter, perhaps related to space and other startup uh, concerns and how you uh, see KaiPod and, and other kinds of resources helping that. I think, you know, one of the challenges is definitely space. Like, where are you going to host your micro school? Do you, you know, and there's a, a million things to do just around that. How do you negotiate a lease? How do you find the right place with the right indoor space that you need? Uh, so we've, and this is where I think we had a similar uh, vision to Kai Pods is, you know, we, we would like to see more personalization and more flexibility in education, like across 
you know, the spectrum, and we'd like to be a part of supporting that. So if we can do that by providing space and at least making that part of starting a micro school easier, then you know, that takes, I think, a huge burden off of people wanting to do this. I think one of the other barriers is just community. You know? So a lot of times micro schools are small um, and that I think the scale hurts attracting new families. Um, because one of the things that people are looking for is a place for their kids to socialize, you know, and then there's sort of the lure of, you know, a bigger private school or a, a public school where there's a, a lot more families and kids their age. So I think the other, you know, barrier we can remove is, and, and continue on this course of flexibility and personalization is by hanging together, kind of banding together as different micro schools, then we'll have that scale, we'll have that community but we don't all have to be the same thing. So Ben, um, how, what is the status then of that vision for the Village Electric? You know, the first year that you were running uh, your micro school there, it was really serving the needs of the families in your learning community. And then the second year you said, let's give back and, and try to accelerate more of these kinds of programs. Uh, has there been interest from others in the community? Have you been able to support other aspiring entrepreneurs near you? We have not found any interest right now. So, um, you know, I think that it's, th there's the dual, per there's the dual uh, sort of like task of running our micro school and also trying to create a bigger community. I think the ways that we're doing that is by bringing in other educators. So we haven't brought in like other micro schools, mm. but we have brought in, um, someone that will teach dance after school or someone that will teach Spanish um, and grow the community that way. So um, we do have um, now offering drama, uh, dance, Spanish, and a choir. So we're building a community that way, but we're still looking, you know, for others that uh, want to start their own, you know, micro school or own program and that, that can kind of be with us. Yeah. And that's a smart incremental way for some um, prospective education entrepreneurs to get going. You know, I hear from a lot of uh, micro school founders who say they started with running an after school program or a tutoring program or some extracurriculars or a summer camp. And they kind of built up their confidence and their reputation with that. And then ultimately led that led to creating a full-time micro school. So it's great that you're being able to support those individual educators who have certain talents that are in demand for your community. Uh, and then hopefully that leads somewhere for them. And so Amar, maybe that's a good place for you to step in and say, you know, how do we help get the word out more about the possibility of micro schools? Because I, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm in my little bubble. I think everybody knows about micro schools. Um, and, and then I'll be surprised with even people who are well versed in education and education policy uh, might be unfamiliar with this, this whole notion of micro school. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, where do you see the momentum for micro schooling going? And how can we support that more effectively? Yeah, happy to. I mean, I often think about school choice as a concept. And how school choice 1.0 was, you know, do you want your public school or your private school, or maybe even a charter school? The unit was the school. And school choice 2.0 is where you get to choose a lot more pieces of the school experience. You can choose your curriculum, you can choose which days you go, you can choose where you go, uh, what philosophy you follow. And so I think when I talk to people who don't understand what a micro school is, except small school, um, I say to them, you know, wouldn't you want to be able to choose more aspects of the learning experience, this school choice 2.0 concept? And they typically say yes. And then I say to them, but look what's happening in most traditional school environments. We're moving towards bigger, more centralized buildings where there are fewer learning pathways, fewer teachers, and just less optionality. And so it's, it's, a, it's a given that the system that controls too much is going to eventually end up losing control. And the system that gives freedom back is a system that's eventually going to win. So I am grateful to be in this little bubble. I am grateful to give families lots of options, give them lots of choices, and enable inspiring entrepreneurs like Ben 
to create a lot more of these options across the country. And I think the power will be in our example. The power will be in people like this who just have dozens of families who rave about them. And so if you're a parent of a micro school student, go rave about it. Go tell everyone about the, the, the wonderful experience your child has had and how that has transformed their life. So Amar, you and I both commented recently on a new Wall Street Journal article that was out that talked about 1 million students have left the public schools since the start of the pandemic, many not going back. Uh, and then in that article, um, the reporter talked about how in, in many districts, this exodus from district schools, which has something to do with the pandemic response, also demographic changes, declining birth rates, and so on. Um, but that this is leading to consolidation of public schools into larger public schools, sort of the opposite trend of the micro school movement where families are, are generally demanding smaller, more personalized learning environments. You know, I wonder your thoughts on, on where that's headed. You know, if we're kind of heading in these two opposite directions, what parents want versus what the, the public schools are, are doing in response to them leaving, you know, how is that going to play out? There's a really good lesson from Jeff Bezos here, where in one of his first letters about Amazon, people were asking him, how can you predict the future? What's going to happen with internet or e-shopping? And he said something to the effect of, I cannot predict the future, but I do know whatever it is, people are going to want it faster and cheaper. And so he invested a lot of Amazon's time on making things faster and cheaper. I think a similar principle applies in education. We don't know what's gonna happen with technology, with um, the culture wars or whatever else, but we do know people are gonna want things that are more flexible, smaller, more convenient. No one's gonna want a bigger school building that's farther from their house. I'm sorry, this is not gonna happen. So why invest in that system? Let's focus on investing in a system that we do know people are gonna want and make that system better. So true. And Ben, you're really on the cutting edge of creating that with the Village Electric that you created um, really in response to your own children's needs. You wanted to provide them with a really highly personalized uh, education environment. I wonder if you can talk about where the Village Electric is now into your second year, roughly six months since we last spoke. Uh, how uh, is the program doing that you've built? What is the response that you're getting from the families in your community? Well, we are focusing on very, you know, personalized and flexible education. So, um, and, you know, taking into account um, every child and, and each child like loving learning and, you know, growing up and being ready to engage with the world and sort of make their own unique contribution. So that really drives everything that we do at the Village Electric starting from, you know, three years old up to 12 and, and hopefully soon beyond into middle school and, and even high. Um, so I, we're focusing on that on our curriculum and and making that experience the best for for each child um and you know i think that that's where uh chi pods is helping us so where is this all going do you think uh ben in new jersey and then amar in, kind of nationally as you think about catalyst and chi pod across the u.s you know ben what are you seeing in new jersey new jersey does not have uh school choice policies but it does have among uh the easiest homeschooling regulations in the country so a lot of innovation coming out of uh, homeschoolers gathering together to create learning pods that often turn into micro schools um, but where do you see education going, especially alternative models in your state? Uh, I agree with Amar on that. I mean, I think, you know, this trend of wanting more flexible, more personalized learning is going to continue. I think we're seeing that in the way that people work, the, the types of jobs they have and how they're working more from home. They're demanding more flexible um, work environments where they can work some days from home and some days in the office. I, I think that trend is going to accelerate and 
parents. For, so f from what I've seen, um, there are a lot of differences in what parents are looking for. Having met many parents and talked to, to many parents, they each come from a unique perspective, unique background of what they're looking for, what, they're, what they, they feel is best for their child, the type of education that they sort of imagine or want from their child. There is a lot of variation. And in a school like ours, um, or you know, a learning center like ours, we're able to offer that. And so we see that actually there's, there's like an, ex, an explosion of interest in those different options and choice. In a public school and even a private school, I don't think you get to exercise that at all as a parent. You're basically required to kind of conform to whatever the curriculum and the standards happen to be at that place. So when people really wake up to that, I think that's like an eye-opening moment. You know, wow, there is a lot of, of ways that education can happen. And I can be very involved in that as a parent. And um, I can kind of personalize to the type, the education to the type of child that I have and how they learn. So I think that's going to happen more and more. I mean, I think there's a lot of disappointment, you know, now with sort of traditional schooling methods, um, whether it be um, the, the, the children are frustrated or the children are struggling or the children are not loving learning. Um, and I think there's going to continue to be a shift to sort of recognizing that it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and like I said, we're seeing that in kind of other areas of our life, even from, you know, companies like Amazon, where you can get what you want, like the next day or the same day. Um, I th think we're going to start to expect that uh, more from our education system. Um, and, and that's where um, it's happening sort of at different rates in different places around the country. Um, but I just feel like that's a trend that's going to accelerate and um, people are going to um, be looking for more options and also be open to um, even knowing that there are other options, you know, and, and yeah. And that they can build the options if they're not there. <laughs> right. So if they can't find what they're looking for, they can uh, go ahead and create it. I like your point around sort of responsive education, right? That we have um, in other areas of our lives, so much consumer choice, so much responsiveness to our demands and wants. Uh, and we don't have that right now in conventional education, mass education, so that these more nimble, more agile, more creative models uh, can help to provide that for families. And once families realize that's a possibility, uh, my suspicion is that more and more of them will choose that. And then thanks to programs like Catalyst, Amar, uh, they'll have a place to go when they ultimately discover that there are so many of these options. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about what you see as the future of education in this country, and then how do you see Catalyst and KaiPod uh, helping to bring in that future? Absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, without predicting the future, as Jeff Bezos cautioned us not to do, um, I think the, the, some of the forecasts in this space are that 5 million families are going to be interested in alternatives like micro schooling, online learning, homeschooling in the next five years. And if we hit that number, that means there will be more people interested in these alternatives than there are in charter schools or there are in private schools. That is a massive groundswell of interest. However, that is, it's a lot scarier to homeschool your child than it is to maybe send them to a local private school, right? assuming you can afford it. So there is a, an effort that's required that a lot of parents can be turned off by or scared of. And so what we're trying to do is make it easier to opt into these alternatives. We want to make it easier for you to find the village electric where your child can be homeschooled but have community in person in their learning center. And what we often find is that when we're entering communities or even in our first year of operations, um, the first uh, segment of families we talk to are existing homeschoolers or existing online learners because they've already sort of made that decision. And now that physical space becomes an add-on. But then in our second year, we've noticed there are now more and more families who are saying, I think I'm done with my traditional school. I think I want to build something on my own. And that's that 5 million, that's that segment 
of all of these wonderful new entrants who, who want to be part of the creation of education. And so the more of those that happen, then you start to see pressure on states and pressure on districts to sort of loosen that grip, to allow these families to choose what is right for them and support them in that journey. That's when this whole sector just escape, gets escape velocity and really becomes what it's aspiring to be. Well, I'll take that non-prediction. I like that 5 million I number. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think, you know, right now we already have parity in the U.S. between the number of uh, homeschooled students and number of charter school students. So we already see that. And then if we can add to that over the next several years, several more million students who are choosing a microschooling environment specifically, um, you're right. I think that is escape velocity. And, and then it really is this tipping point where, where, where families mostly are aware at that point of various options um, beyond an assigned district school. We already see some of that happening in states that have long had robust school choice policies that enable education dollars to follow students instead of going to school systems especially in Arizona that's had a long history of that. There is a culture of education choice there that parents know that they do have options beyond an assigned district school. And KiPod uh, is one of them. You're now in Arizona with some pods there. So being really a part of that marketplace of opportunities for families. Yeah. So Amar, if my listeners and viewers are interested in what you've said, they want to start a micro school in September and, and get some help from KaiPod Catalyst, what's the best way uh, for them to reach you and, and find out more? Yeah, so go, just go directly to our website. You can go to KaiPodLearning.com and you'll get a, you'll find a link there for Catalyst where you can apply. Our round of applications closes at the end of January and then our cohorts start in February. So do encourage you to get on that right away. And like I said, the first step is just fill out the application. Don't think too far ahead. Just, just fill out that application to really take the first step. And then for anyone who's not quite ready for Catalyst, but just wants to talk about this sector or just wants to talk about micro schools or you have your own micro school, um, just reach out. Uh, you can contact me directly from our website. Um, and I'd love to talk to you about what you're thinking about because these ideas are what, uh, what, what matter right now. Yeah. And that's just what Ben did, right? Yeah. He reached out to you <laughs> and then look where this has led. And so Ben, if my listeners are and viewers are interested in learning more about the Village Electric, uh, or maybe there's some aspiring New Jersey education entrepreneurs who would like to ha have your help in incubating a, a program there, what is the best way for them to reach out to you? You can learn more about us on our website at thevillageelectric.com. And um, you can always email me at ben at thevillageelectric.com. Ben Ashfield and Amar Kumar, thank you again and again for being on <laughs> the Liberated Podcast. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much, Carrie.